Hi everyone and welcome to In the Kitchen episode 6 and today we will be making shepherd's pie. We're making a shepherd's pie from Harry Potter and the chef from the Leaky Cauldron released the recipe on the Today Show in 2014. So I found that recipe and that's what we're going to make today. For the shepherd's pie, we're going to start a little backwards. We make mashed potatoes that'll top the pie. So we have potatoes, butter, and milk that we'll use for the mashed potatoes along with some salt and pepper over here. Then for the shepherd's pie, I'm going to have to make some beef stock. So I'm gonna use the better than bullion beef. We're gonna have some peas, tomato paste, parsley, carrots, thyme, onion, and then there's some salt and pepper, some canola oil and flour. And I am actually defrosting some ground turkey. And we're gonna use this as the meat for the shepherd's pie. Now, technically shepherd's pie, if it's made with beef is cottage pie because traditional shepherd's pie is made with lamb, but we're gonna make it with ground turkey. So I'm actually not even sure what type of pie it would be. I'm starting with prepping potatoes, scrubbing them, and we're going to turn these into mashed potatoes. And we're starting with this first because this has to be done in order to assemble the entire shepherd's pie. And I wanna get these potatoes boiling. So I'm just kind of doing that while we get things started. I figured I could scrub, and then when she comes in, she'll direct to me. So when I peel potatoes, I like to fill a, the pot I'm going to cook the potatoes in and a, put a little water in there. So as I'm uh, peeling and then I cut the potatoes, I throw them in the water really quickly. Potatoes oxidize, or they turn brown, black, blue, kind of brownish color very quickly. And so I like to throw them in the water to help slow that coloring process. Uh, so when we, when we make the mashed potatoes, the mashed potatoes are still white and they're not an off color, but it helps a little bit with the oxidation. So we have this peeler, I think it's an OXO. We have a peeler, it's an OXO peeler. I love this peeler, love it. It is so easy peeling down. You don't ever cut yourself. It's so easy to do, it's smooth. Love this thing. Okay, well, she is going to peel all the potatoes. I will tell you what ingredients we will need. So you need a pound of beef, but that is turkey. Because, yeah. And sometimes you have a party fail. So since it's not cooked yet, in my kitchen, not in a, you know, real kitchen, but in my kitchen, I'll rinse it off and keep peeling. Then you're going to need a teaspoon of carrots that are peeled and diced small. You're going to need a half a teaspoon of yellow onion peeled and diced small. You're going to need two teaspoons of green peas. We just had some peas from leftovers so we just put some in a little bowl. Then you are going to need three. <laughs> he wants shepherd's pie. You're gonna need three fourths teaspoon of mushrooms. I don't think we have those out yet. That's okay. We're gonna need. The honest truth is, we might have eaten up the mushrooms. Uh. So we did um, chicken marsala, and I think we ate them up. I don't know if we have any. So we'll have to see. Most of the stuff we had is ingredients in the house already, so that's why this was the easy recipe to choose. Then you're gonna need a half a teaspoon of tomato paste. You're going to need a cup of beef stock. That's, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we're gonna use the better than bouillon and we're gonna make, we're gonna put add that with hot water and we're gonna make the beef stock. You're gonna need a teaspoon of- Worcestershire. We're gonna need a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. That's how I say it, Worcestershire. You're going to need two uh, things of thyme. Sprigs. Sprigs. Of They're right here. So it's like two little stalks. I can't see. You're going to need a half a bundle of fresh parsley. Just that. You're going to need salt. Just so it has flavor. You're going to need black pepper for flavor. Half a teaspoon of canola oil 
I'm going to need a teaspoon of all-purpose flour. I'm going to need four potatoes or like us and you like mashed potatoes a lot more than four. Uh, four cups of water and half a stick of unsalted butter. And I am guessing that the water and the butter is a part of making the mashed potato and I'm confused why there isn't milk to make the mashed potato. I'm actually confused about that, so we'll have to read. And we also have heavy cream if we wanted to use that instead, but I'm just gonna, we'll read the directions, but we may make the mashed potato uh, the way we just normally make them. But I have a feeling they probably have to be thick to stay on the top, but we'll find out. And then we're, we may increase some of the ingredients because I feel like we actually have more meat and we're filling up a 13 by nine by two pan. And even though the recipe says that this will fill that and it might, I'm going to, I know I'm going to add more carrot and I think I'm going to, I might go a little bit more stock with it. So we'll see what happens. We might alter, so we might alter the ingredients a teeny bit. So there, I also made a butter beer slash butter beer milkshake kind of, and I'll link that and the little eye, whichever one corner that is in or in the kitchen, but I'm going to try to make it more of the frozen butter beer. So instead, I'm going to add new ice cream and probably add more um, butterscotch to it. We just found Muggle.net. I also went on, I think the Harry Potter wiki site to the recipes. Okay, calm down. And there was Shepherd's Pie by Elizabeth and Shepherd's Pie by Sabrina. They both looked really, really good. And I almost made Sabrina's. It has really interesting ingredients, including, including corn, paprika, rosemary, tomatoes. I was very close to making this. This is a more traditional, Elizabeth's had just, um, you're really using beef gravy, garlic, onion, pepper, mashed potatoes. It's interesting because actually, I don't think this recipe has garlic in it, does it? I had set the garlic mm -hmm. out. That's really weird. Interesting. Um, and then I also found another recipe from a family, a mom, and she went to Harry Potter and then came home and tried to replicate the recipe too. And hers was a little different also, but I ended up going with the, the chef from the Leaky Cauldron. Although you were trying to go for the shepherd's pie from the three broomsticks was our original intention yeah. from this. Cause that's the one, did you eat that? No, you had fish and chips. Yeah, one of us, did one of us get it? Had it? Yeah, so one of us had it and, and the, but the picture looks the same. Cause the picture has, it's a small, it's a single serving of the shepherd's pie and then it comes with a salad on the side. Mm -hmm. So I got potato on my finger. But so we looked at a lot of different recipes mm -hmm. and I kind of landed just on this one to start with technically cottage pie. But I don't like I said before, I don't even know if it's cottage pie because we're using ground turkey, but we'll see. Okay. So what I'm doing next is I'm going to, I have peeled all my potatoes and I'm going to cut them up because I went fast. Um, I haven't put them in the water yet, but what I'm going to do is this is my pot. I'm going to boil the potatoes in and I'm going to cut them up really fast. And then I'm going to, um, put them in the water. So I am, um, just cutting up the potatoes. I like to cut them in uniform, smaller pieces and it helps them cook even. This is the same exact thing I do when I make potato salad too, very similar. So I like to peel my potatoes. I know you can go to restaurants and you get the mashed potatoes that have the peel on, but I prefer them unpeeled. So I'm just cutting them in half and then cutting them in slices. I am, these are smaller potatoes, so that's kind of all you have to do with these. Where's the potatoes? Can you see them? With a pot. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, since we already have the peeler out, is we're going to peel some carrot. And instead of two teaspoons, whatever the thing is, we're going to go ahead, we're going to peel at least two carrots. We're going to put them in. So another thing we're going to do at a point here is we're going to do, we're going to make um, a cup of beef stock. And so we're going to use this better than bullion beef base. These things are awesome. I use the chicken one all the time. So uh, we're going to heat some water in a little bit. I'll probably just microwave it. We could put the tea kettle on if you want to. I don't know if you're wanting to make anything with the tea kettle. If you want to make a boba. But um, a boba tea. A boba? Yeah. But um, 
So we'll we'll be making this in just a minute. I'll start boiling some water. We're adding more carrot than the recipe calls for because I don't have mushrooms and I know the carrot's going to sweeten it, but I want to get a little bit more vegetable into the dish to tell you the truth. So we're going to do that. So we get some extra vegetable and I'm going to go ahead while you're doing that is I'm just going to um, get the thyme and just wash it off and get the little sprigs ready. I'm going to use my handy dandy thyme puller which is a uh, vegetable. I got this from Sur, Sur La Table. Is that, is that good? Sur, Sur La Table. Sur La Table in the mall. And you can actually stick the herb through one of the. depending on the size of it, and it'll actually easily shred the thyme, or a lot easier than pulling it yourself out. So it's actually okay. pretty good. It's heated up, convection bake, 400 degrees. Convection always drops at 25 degrees, so that's 400. I'm getting ready to drop the onion in. We're gonna saute this, and we're gonna- That's throw... a carrot. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. I have onion on the brain. So cook, cut up like half of the onion that's over there. And we're not going to put the whole thing in this. I'm going to use it for something else. Once we're assembling it all, it's going to go into the coated Pyrex. This is well used, well loved. It's glass, 13 by 9 by 2. I guess it's not technically a Pyrex. It's a anchor. Okay, coated anchor. <laughs> Soft to tender. And then you're going to add onion to cook for a couple minutes. And then you're going to add our meat. We're going to cook that. And then we're going to season it. And then eventually we're going to get the peas and the stock and all that in there. So while that's happening, sorry, I have to move elevator. And actually we should, cause it's actually getting warm. Do you feel oh. it? Go ahead and feel it. And I think I'm getting it greasy touching it. Yeah, don't. I'll remove that. Okay, so up here we have um, a really good measuring cup. Holds four cups. And we're going to fill this with water. Now, the recipe only calls for one cup. No, four cups. No. The recipe calls for one cup of stock. Oh, oh I thought you were talking about water. I think the four cups of water are... Um, see, it says preheat your oven to 400. In the meantime, saute the carrots in the canola oil until they start to get tender. Add in onions and saute for a minute or two. Then add the meat. Season the vegetables and the meat with black pepper and thyme. Once the ground beef has been browned, drain the fat. We're not going to have fat, but we could have some water we're going to have to drain off. Add the butter and the peas, then sprinkle with flour and stir. Let this reduce slightly to make a stock. After adding the stock, reduce it to thick, meaty gravy. Remove the mixture from heat, then grease a, a dish, for example, a 9 by 13 pan or an oval with butter. Add the sauce. Once in the pan, spine or poops. Once in the pan, spoon or pipe mashed potatoes on top, brushed with egg. Allow to bake for approximately 20 minutes until the potato is browned on top. I think the water is supposed to be for the potatoes, even though it doesn't say that. The carrots. It smells really good, doesn't it? Okay, so we're gonna add onion. I actually, I'm gonna add the whole thing. The recipe calls for less, but I like that one. You know that. Mm -hmm. I'd probably add garlic in this too, but I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. The recipe doesn't call. She's cooking the ground turkey and the onion and carrot have been sauteed, so she's added that in. So I'm going to check the potatoes, getting a fork out. I think they're probably done. They're very, very, very close. They're very soft. Very close. So how are you going to want to do the potatoes? Do you want to do my big KitchenAid mixer or do you want to do the hand mixer? The, the big one. Okay. I'm probably just going to spoon it out and drop it in versus draining it. Straining it. We'll see. Yeah. Just got to cook, cook, cook. What's going on with the Today Show recipe? It's missing 
adding in the tomato paste, which I'm assuming I'm going to do before I add the stock in. We do add butter, flour. I'm going to do, I'm going to add the paste before I add the butter and the flour, I think. All right, this is what it's looking like so far. I'm pretty sure all of the meat is cooked for the most part. Probably even leave it in for like a couple more minutes. Add the peas. Mm -hmm. This guy has been watching our every move. I'm going to open the tomato. Oh, tomato basil paste, apparently. That's okay. I'm not sure we're supposed to add in. I think I have teaspoons. I don't think. Can you stop that? Basically, we're just. We should do the work here. That's not in the recipe either. To, to add in. I mean, it's in the ingredients, but on the recipe. The end of this video, we're going to go over what the recipe says. So the recipe has ingredients, but it doesn't list how to put all the ingredients in the. Um, Mm -hmm. So we're kind of just guessing. So I'm getting my better than bouillon ready. It is one uh, teaspoon to one cup, I believe. It's except one teaspoon and eight ounces of boiling water. So we actually are going to have more. We're going to do two teaspoons to the two cups. We're making a flaming mo. Another video. Oh. I'm just gonna let this, you have to put it in very hot water so it breaks down. And that'll give us our broth that we need. All right, I've added butter and I'm just beating the potatoes. I'm about to add some milk. Or should I be, be decadent and add heavy cream? What's your vote? Milk, milk. okay. Going. I just added milk. Check it in a second. I still need to add salt and pepper. I want to make sure it's the right consistency. And I need to knock the uh, mashed potato pieces off the top of the bowl here. Check it. Coming around. I think this is done. She's cooking it. The flour is in there? Yeah. Now that the flour is in there, you can add the stock. So you're adding that. Remember, we're adding more than the recipe calls for, so hopefully that doesn't burn us in the end. I'm sorry, what now? Meaning. So you added flour and the butter to make a roux when you had the stock to thicken it. We might have to add a little more flour to make it really thick. You added more flour than the recipe called for already. Mm -hmm. But um, we're going to let this cook for a few minutes. So we're going to have this reduced down to thicken, and then we can season it with salt and pepper. All right, I'm scraping off the potato nuggets off the top. I have to see if this is the creamy consistency I want. Uh, I guess so. It doesn't really... It's pretty bland. So it is going to get salt and pepper here. <laughs> For a couple minutes. And it's thickening up. Nicely. We're almost there. See that? We're about ready to pour it in our grease pan. I sprayed it with Pam 13 by 9 by 2. And then we're going to top it with the mashed potatoes sitting here and bake it for 20 minutes. And then we're going to make what? Butter beer. How about you? Are you wanting some of this? 
Yeah? We're getting close on the shepherd's pie. I'm getting a facial. There's nothing like a meat facial. It's wanting to go certain places. I gotta move it around. Getting close. Almost gone. And it helps you say, put it where you want, or you think it needs it. This is gonna make it gold and brown. We could probably pour the egg on top too a little bit. It's interesting it said that. You could also brush it with oil probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give it a little egg wash. Sometimes egg wash is just uh, the white. I think it's the white, not the yolk. I'll have to think about that. Now it's all egged up. Now we're going to put it into the oven. oven with your Harry Potter sleeves. I guarantee you Harry Potter never cooked in that. <laughs> right, here we go. Look at that. We're gonna set the oven for 20 minutes. Now time for butter beer. Okay, so the original recipe calls for 12 ounces of cream soda, two to three tablespoons of butterscotch, a fourth cup of ice, and half of a quart of ice cream. Since I want to try to make it more like the actual frozen butter cream, um, butter beer, it's going to have no ice cream and we're just going to double up on most of the stuff. Okay, so starting with the ice, I'm going to do, how many cups should I do? So the fourth cup is not frozen. Do two cups. We'll do two cups. This is about two cups. Add that into the mixer. So we're going to do four tablespoons, roughly, of the butter scotch. Okay, this thing calls for 12 ounces, but we'll do 16, because there's more of us. Now, let's blend it up. Three, two, one. No, calm down. Another cup of ice and blend and then see what that looks like. Okay, here we go. Ooh, I don't know, it's really good. I don't remember what butterbeer tastes like 100%. What do you think? Butterbeer is a lot more sweet, but. So next time we're at Universal, then I will remember what this will taste like and compare it. Here's to how it turned out. Smells delicious. Butter beers here. Look at him. He's sitting here wagging his tail, wetting his butter beer. Oh. oh my God. <laughs> it's kind of falling apart. <laughs> it's not holding together like lasagna. All right, this is my second taste. Actually, it's pretty good. I was gonna say something smart, but we made a salad. What do you think? It's very good. I like the crust on the top, the meat, 
the vegetables. Top shelf. Good job. Is there anything you want to add for the shepherd's pie? It tasted really good. I would have liked the crust of the mashed potato crustier. It was a little soft. And the the recipe didn't include all the steps. So we went ahead and changed some up. Um, it didn't, all the ingredients weren't included in the description of when to put them in, but it was really good. I think next time I would add more tomato paste or even a diced tomato in the mix. Um, and that other lady's recipe from the muggle.net had rosemary and some other stuff in it that might make it interesting. It was very good. It, we had like just this much left of the entire 13 by 9 pan. <laughs> so it was good. What was our request from our family? They could each have their own individual pie and make it, um, make the crust crispier. So it was like you were cutting through it. So also could have been how I made the mashed potato too. Maybe I didn't need as much liquid in there, but it was good. I enjoyed it. It's almost all gone. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below what you think we should do in a future episode of In the Kitchen. And ring the notification bell. Ring the bell. So you'll be notified of our next upload. And may the adventures be with you. you.